So, we go from firing Director James Comey of the FBI, and we move forward into firing Donald Trump through this impeachment process that we're hearing people calling for. And this isn't, guys, guys, like, I, I did witness a few little things that really bothered me, but that's okay. This isn't just a few people on the internet making up a few things here. There legitimately was someone that stood up in one of them official-like buildings and said some official-like words that made all of this a very real and official thing. Someone actually stood somewhere and called for the impeachment of the president. So now, if I'm not mistaken, although very quiet, this is going to happen, but a lot of this is done through letters and paperwork right now. Like, this is fucked up. Like, there's, there's, there's resignation from what I understood. Um, and then there's, there's assassination. Those are the obvious ones, right? That pop up when you don't like your president. Um, we have impeachment, which is, is a lengthy and, and Jesus, because I was, I was alive, okay, I was there, like, I was just, just old enough to know that Bill Clinton was the President of the United States, and then something was happening that was going to make it so that he wasn't going to be the President of the United States, and I was like, election? And they said, no. And now I understand more and more what happened to him, yeah, somewhat. But an impeachment is a long, lengthy, drawn-out process. Um, I won't lie in, in this instance. A resignation would be in the best interest of the Trump family, just because of the kind of garbage that's going to be tossed towards the Trump family. I don't have to like or dislike the Trump family. They have enough money to buy and sell my ass on fucking credit, okay? They, they earn nothing me saying nice things about them. But... It is still important to realize that they're human beings, that they're, they're a family, they're a family that have a lot of money, um, and most likely, dirty laundry, skeletons in the closet, all of which are going to get dug right the fuck out and made very obvious for you to see, um, especially during impeachment processes. So let's, uh, let's keep that in mind. Excuse me, I got a little itch there, that was a little annoying. There we go. <clears throat> and then, so we had uh, resignation, assassination impeachment, and if I'm not mistaken, you guys have something called the 25th Amendment. I honestly think that's the direction your, your country might go with this, or they're going to try to go with this, I guess. But this is why I don't like <clears throat> excuse me, what they're about to try and do, because it's all bureaucratic. It's all done letters from one office to another office, and uh, it's it's shady, it's dirty, it's if you don't like the man that much, shoot him. Don't do this nonsense. And you know what? I honestly, God, think Donald Trump would probably say the same thing. Don't like me? Shoot me. Assassinate me. Do what you believe you need to do to get me out of office. But these impeachment processes and the 25th Amendment, and these are dark, shady, underhanded ways of getting a president out of office. I like the Old West. There was a time in history where the best ideas did not always win the battle. The guy that had a bad idea but was good with the gun could win that one. So, today's society, not so much. This is why we have things like impeachments and 25th Amendment, because no one wants to fucking shoot the guy. Okay? Not going out there and saying, hey, let's all get together and assassinate the president. This isn't what I'm saying, but what I'm trying to get at quite legitimately here is what they're doing to Donald Trump is a bitch move. That's all it is. Y'all are bitches. 
You don't know what you're doing. You ran with your tail between your legs. Like, what do you want me to say? There's nothing I could say that's going to make this any easier for you to swallow. Donald Trump is now the president of the United States of America. Been so for quite a while now. Nothing y'all can do about it. Now, you can try, but what you're trying to do is destroy your own country. That's what you're trying to do. It makes no logical, physical sense. This is probably why the United States, as a government and as a military, is so good at going to other countries in the world and smashing them to fucking pieces. Because as soon as it starts to go in a direction, it doesn't even have to go in a direction that's good or bad, as long as it starts to fucking move. The United States of America and Canada, also guilty here, we're pretty fucking stagnant nations right now. Yeah, sure, we got big buildings and cars and it all looks good and it all looks pretty and we, we all know that there is a next step <clears throat> and that we shouldn't be hiding that next step, that we should be moving forward with it, that we should be protecting it. And a lot of people don't want to build all of the nice things that are involved in the next step because they're afraid that throughout the ending of this step, it's all going to get blown up anyway. That's why you don't got free energy. That's why we don't have new clean technologies. Why would you spend billions and billions and billions of dollars to build it? Trillions of fucking dollars to build something that would fit in what would call the Venus Project New Age Technological Era of Things. Why would you build that? Knowing full well someone's just going to drop a goddamn nuke on it anyway. Why, why would Russia be so quick to jump on that and, and build all these things like that? Because as soon as they started to succeed... As soon as they started to look better than the states, so the states are going to be, well, that's not fucking cool. And they're going to hit a button, and then it's going to be World War III, and then we all lose our nice things. So, this is what's happening. We're all on the cusp of a war. Everybody wants to go to war. Everybody, I always say this wrong. Everybody's thinking about going to war. Nobody wants to go to war. Nobody wants to go to war. It's not, it's, nobody wakes up saying, hmm, how can I plunder the entire goddamn planet into chaos today? It's not, that's not how it works. War takes place through mismanagement, mis miscommunications, inappropriate financing, the okaying of bad ideas. All of these individualistic little things put together create the climate for war. It's going to be very interesting because the United States today is kind of the same age, same industrial power, same all that nonsense as um, Adolf Hitler's Germany was. We remember that during World War II that the United States was a young, vibrant, and powerful nation. Key word, young. The United States was a young nation during World War II. If it was young during World War II, is it fair to say it's aged a little bit since? And if it has aged a little bit since, is it fair to say that the United States is sitting similarly in development as to what Germany was prior to the war? Every time a country gets to where Adolf Hitler was, shit goes south. Nobody really knows why, but it does. It's happening. It happened to Rome. Empire fucking collapsed. I'm not about to go and say that Nazis had an empire, but they were building some pretty fucking awesome shit, man. It was getting big. It got to a certain point and collapsed. Is this where we are historically right now with the United States of America? Like, or is this what like the big thinkers are trying to figure out? Is this where they're like, wait, we're there. Nobody fucking move. Don't even step the wrong way. This is a house of cards, and she's about to come crumbling fucking down. Is this where we're at? Like, where we've come to realize that this is where it crumbles. Right here. Right fucking now. This is where shit falls the fuck apart. History shows it. We're trying to figure out why. We just need to pay attention. That's all it is, especially during a time in which everybody's saying, hey, 
Look over there. You pay attention to it, to all of it. It's all you can do. You're going to see the symbols. You're going to see everything out there. You're going to hear what people are saying. Listen to how people talk. <clears throat> Excuse me. Got some smoke in my eye there. <clears throat> Excuse me. That's where it all derives from. Listen to how people speak. How do they speak about their country, your country? Um, how do they speak about their religion, your religion? This is important. It's fucking immensely important. Once you figure out how a person feels about their nation or the nation that is their home at the time. So if you're talking to a refugee, they were not born here. So find out what the fuck Syria was like pre-bombardment, <clears throat> not post-bombardment. Because I won't lie, there was an entire society in Syria. If you didn't know about it, if you don't know why they have actually destroyed Syria, then you'll never understand the, the, the grand scope of the war. You will never understand why I have am branded the enemy and why people like me are not allowed to live anymore. Okay? Syria is a nice little spot in the Middle East. Beautiful. I've seen some pictures of the before and the afters. Beautiful little country prior to the war. This nation was very proud for itself. This nation had no central bank. So for those of you who are New World Order, Rothschild, Rockefeller, and like all big corporation, big money, basics, and Federal Reserve oriented, Syria didn't have one. Syria was part of the fucking resistance, guys. Don't you guys get it? These countries they're going to war with don't have these central banks that we want to get the fuck out. You guys didn't catch that play, did you? But Syria didn't have a central bank. So we know now a little bit about Syria, about the nation. We know, and then there we go, all those fucking Muslims. Oh, well, no, you got to stop there. You got to stop there, though, especially when referring to Syria. Because Syria had a beautiful aspect about it, where Christians, Muslims, and Jews lived in fucking peace in Syria. You want a peace in the Middle East? Yeah, you should have sent 10 million soldiers to Syria, and you should have fanned out. You should have took the belief structure found within Syria and spread that throughout the Middle East. You could have called Syria the seed of civilization, whereas we call Africa the cradle, or so on and so forth, of civilization. You could then sow a new seed, and Syria would have been the beautiful fucking thing right there, because the people that lived within that land were of all three Abrahamic faiths and managed to do so in peace. For some reason, Israel can't fucking live in peace with the Palestinians. Nobody knows why. Apparently, the West out here doesn't know how to respect a fucking Muslim. Nobody knows why. But in Syria, they had that shit fucked on lockdown. You're going to ask me with a straight face why Syria is being destroyed? That's why. And they can't, this is the problem, right? They can't get any true and honest dirt on Assad in Syria. They can't, they can't dig it up. They can't do something to just oust him. They, he ain't no Trump. Assad is not no Donald Trump. You, they don't, you can't just push him out, apparently. They need an entire rebellion. They need an entire regime change. They, they need to invest billions of fucking dollars into a country that has nothing to do with them. And then they got to destroy it. And they got to do all this bullshit to put, it to get, put it back together. See, like I said, we go out places. We say, oh, look, pretty. Wasn't it fucking pretty? All three people living there in peace. Wasn't it great? Come on now. Don't disagree with me on this one. So we go there. We fucking see it. We go, oh, look, pretty. Boom. We blow it up. Let's try. And, let's try. Let's try. 
and make something prettier. My fucking brain hurts, but that's what we're doing, guys. Okay? So when, when they said Syrian refugees, well, I immediately started to examine Syria. What? Because I need to know what kind of fucking people are coming to my country. Okay? After doing the research, I'm good. They know how to adapt here. They know what they're doing. They're not fucking morons. They've already lived. They've created a society that had all three religions found within it. That's why it's important to find out the religious aspects. People kill for three specific reasons. Money, women, and God. That's it. You burst into a man's house, you try to hurt his wife and his family, that may not go over very well. I can't foresee that going over very well, especially if he knows what he's doing and he's armed. It's going to be a bad fucking day in the shop. I can't guarantee that you're going to have the best day of your life if you start messing with another person's bank account. That, that, that might suck a little bit. Like you, you might be picking turnips from a stepladder. Right? That happens. You mess with a person's religion, you mess with a person's God. There could be some severe fucking repercussions there. Problem that we're finding here is those who like to kill for their God. See, because we're stupid here in the West. You can kill for just about every other reason out in the world. And you will not be demonized in such a way. You start killing for your god. Well, they got to be careful. <laughs> that shit might spread. I, I, I brought a very interesting thought to the table on multiple occasions. I don't know how many of you are prepared to accept it. But <clears throat> if you're a Christian and you're watching these videos... There comes a point where you have to get off the fence. You know, it's been said multiple times, you know, you can't be lukewarm, you can't serve two masters. All these scriptures, they never truly made sense until I found the Talmud. And then I realized, oh, well, you really can't read Christ's teachings and read these teachings at the same time and profess to be one or the other. Because one is legitimately anti the other. That's the problem. Like, <clears throat> the Talmud literally says that Jesus Christ is in hell boiling in human excrement. Okay, that's a passage from the Talmud. There's other disgusting Talmud, uh, Talmudic passages that I've shared with you to give you an idea as to what kind of person would read these books and what kind of person, what kind of religious attributes would be found from a person that would read these books. It's not my fault that your religious gurus wrote these books. It's also not my fault that you choose to follow what is written in these books. But I'm telling you, if you follow what is in the Talmud, I'm going to shoot you. That's all. Men like me will be provided a battlefield again. And we will deliberately massacre all of those Talmudic, pedophilic fucking pieces of shit. And you know what I've realized? Is that's what the Quran said. Well, that's a little upsetting. Because I don't agree with pedophilia. I don't agree with a religion that agrees with pedophilia. Okay, I'm not... You, see, everyone's like, oh, what about the child marriage found in the Quran? What about the child marriage found in the Bible? Wake the fuck up, people. Seriously. But I can find nowhere in the Quran and nowhere in the Bible that legitimately says it's okay to molest a three-year-old little girl. I can't find that shit in those books. It's fair to say that those two books are written by the same author. Just putting it out there. And yet, both books discuss of an abhorrent evil in the world. And then, when some little-ass peasant like me identifies that abhorrent evil, oh, well, then that's, 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 can't be, can't do that. What do you mean I can't do that? 
That, that just fucking hurts the brain. No, no, you can't do that. You can't show the people who the evil one is. What? Why? Well, then they're going to start killing people. Okay. Don't, don't, don't cry on the news when you hear about a little girl got caught in the trafficking trade, the skin trade, and then get mad when people identify who's doing it. It's not our fault. It's not our fault that there is an evil in the world. It's not our fault that that evil actually has you by the short and curlies right now. It's not. That, nothing, that has nothing to do with us at that point. That has everything to do with the people doing that nonsense out there. And that nonsense is really happening out there and people really need to start putting a stop to it. And I'm sorry. If you got to do it with a bullet, then that's what you do because the court system's taking too long. And apparently, every time you go after these pieces of shit, they get fired. There's only one more way left. So, we give them a little more time. Because the truth is, is that there's like 7 billion flipping people on this planet right now. And if a true and honest global revolutionary uprising were to ever take place, oof. You're not ready for it. Do you know how to grow your own food yet? No. Do you, are you trained in any form of self-defense, martial arts combat? Can you protect your body? No. Do you even know how to fire a firearm? Do you know how to load a, In a shit hits the fan situation, and you're at your front step, and the soldier commissioned to protecting your block dies. He gets fucking shot and killed, or she gets shot and killed. Do you know how to pick up their weapon and point it the right direction? I don't think so. There was a time. When the answer to most of those questions were absolutely 100% yes, there was a time where every home had a small garden in their backyard, good enough to feed the household. There was a time where every home had as many chickens in the house as there, did, as there was people. It's the best way to stay in fresh eggs, by the way. If you didn't know, one laying hen, hen for every person in the house will keep you daily in fresh eggs. Okay? These all teeny tiny tidbit pieces of fucking information nobody seems to remember them do you hunt do you hunt do you know what the, the basic bare bone brutal brutality teachings found within hunting are required for yeah you guessed it war you need to be hungry a legitimate kind of hungry with a weapon and you got to be out in the woods and you got to select a beast. And you have to be intelligent about what you're doing. You don't want to take out the pregnant female or the female that's taking care of a young one. You don't want to take out the big badass Brahma bull, the one that's doing all the work for you. You need to take out something within the middle of that, that spectrum. Find something old. Find something a little just, eh. You know, something that I can just kill and eat. We're good. Okay? Now, you got to raise your weapon. You gotta look at one of the most beautiful creatures on the planet. Why is it the most beautiful creature on the planet at that point? Because you are about to destroy it. Okay? So you have to take a second and take in everything. You're gonna take that soul. You pull the trigger, you put it down, and at this point, you become very Native American-like, and you take a few seconds, and you actually thank the beast for being there. Thank that, that entire moment that, okay, my ass isn't going to starve because this entire situation exists. So you take a minute to thank, be a little bit thankful. I think that is legitimately where the basis of God comes into play. Where it's like, fuck, this could have went the other way. I could have starved out here. Okay? Take, take those reverent moments. You do what you got to do. Well, there comes a point when at the other end 
of that scope may not be a bear, may not be a moose, may not be a deer or a rabbit, but it may be an invading force. And what are you going to have to do? You're going to have to take a few minutes and get ready to destroy one of the most beautiful creatures on the planet, another human being. You have to have that kind of in your brain already. Kind of prepare yourself. Because when the time comes to defend yourself from an invading force, oh no, well that's why we have a military and that's why we have... We have governments, and that's why we have, and that's why they have nuclear weapons. How honest to God, honestly, like, seriously. You have to live in your brain in a world where the capitals of the world don't exist anymore. Because when the shit hits the fan, one, you're not going to know it's going to hit the fan. It's just going to happen. And when it does, the capitals aren't there anymore. The military is no longer as strong as it once was. It just took a severe blow. There's going to be so much chaos that's rampant that literally just taken off into the woods for a little bit because, well, you know these woods better than anybody else, is the best idea. You come out from time to time, plunder in the, you know, what used to be your old village, and you get what you need to do. Wait for the winter to come, and you annex these sons of bitches, and you take the country back. That's the Canadian way. <clears throat> but at the end of the day here, there's a lot that has to go in this little brain of ours before we start to say, oh yes, resist. Because I'm watching these, uh, oh by the way, these Antifa sidebar, these Antifa videos of the guys fucking around with guns and that, okay? The truth is, me observing them tells me that they look like people who know exactly what they're doing with their firearms, but are trolling it's a troll video, guys. They're, they're, they're just fucking around. But hey, if they're not, well, this is going to be interesting to see. Because will I have seen the birth of this Antifa bullshit and then just in a few months from now, a mass shooting is going to take place? That's all going to be blamed on the Antifa people and this is going to lead to more gun control in the United States. Oh, oh fuck, I think the crystal ball just lit up there for a second. Can't, the news can't show video footage that they found on the internet regarding to a, gr a militia group or a group that causes violence if the video was never initially there in the first place. The truth is, false flag attacks are entirely, entirely larger to put together than anybody would like to believe. You need to have the material to paint the bad guy into a certain light. And then, manufacture the event. False flag attacks do not mean the event is fake. The event as a whole is absolutely real. Won't lie though, Lusitania, that was plura fucking straight out fake. There was not even a boat involved. <clears throat> but what I'm getting at here is that a false flag does not mean fake. False flag does not mean no dead bodies. False flag means false narrative. Although something happened, you're being told that it happened for a different reason. That's false flag. That's very important, especially right now. Because false flags are going to start climbing bang, 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 bang. Until it pops. That's what all this is. This is what growing old apparently is. Enjoying the blissful niceness of being a child and the innocence and all that beautiful stuff. Being rebellious to our parents and then realizing, oh, fuck. All right, well, I guess the next rebellion is against the government. But what happens when the government really didn't do anything to be rebellious against yet? Well, then we got to rebel against the war. Well, if you're going to rebel against something like the war, you better know the war. Because this make peace, not love nonsense is no. Okay, so here. <clears throat> there will be peace on the earth when every pedophile alive is dead. That's it. Every pedophile alive is to be killed. Maybe. And I don't care who you are. I don't care what office you hold. I don't care how much money you have. 
No more judge, no more jury. We just kill you. That's it. Bye-bye. Your money can't buy you nothing. Okay? Because that's, that's what pisses me off in this society. If the pedophile has money, he can buy a lawyer. And the lawyer gets to protect a monster with laws used to protect civil men and women that might have just lost their cool one day. That it would be otherwise reasonable human beings. This is why the law is there. For people who break it, who would otherwise be reasonable human fucking beings. We say, okay, look, well, you, just go, you just go sit in that box for a little bit, okay? When you come out, you can tell us all the, all the stories that you've learned while you were in there. And uh, don't do that shit again, okay? Awesome. The way society is looking, we've branded pedophilia as a disease. And we've branded pedophilia as a sexual orientation, okay? Both of those two things are not things you can stop when you get out of the box. So you don't get out of the box. You're dead. This is how we purge and help a society. You get rid of the fucking pedophiles. You kill them all. You know? And I find that interesting because I'm a little bit more radical than Adolf Hitler there. Because people always talk about how Adolf Hitler was burning books. Right? Just burning all them books. Hey, the, the, the book burning son of a bitch. Did y'all know that the books that he was burning was like smut, like Fifty Shades of Grey and fucking porn? And because if I understand, like he was comparing, what was it, Berlin, was it? To uh, fucking Sodom and Gomorrah. There was a part of Germany. I don't, I don't want to say it wrong. I don't want to fuck it all up there. But there was a part in the nation of Germany that, that he called... Sodom and Gomorrah pretty well. You know, kind of like the United States has as well. We call it Las Vegas now, but it's, it's quite similar in its attributes to Sodom and Gomorrah. Yeah, so he just didn't want that anymore. And if the United States decided one day that it just didn't want that in its society anymore, the fuck would happen? How would that go? Oh, well, it's a free society. No, it really isn't free because, no, you're not free to diddle little boys and girls. You're just not. Not on our watch. That is going to fuck some people up. Because if you're going to kill every pedophile, well then you're going to have to go after all them Talmud reading motherfuckers too, aren't you? Considering that's the religion that actually preaches pedophilia. Hmm. I figured out the evil. If I know who teaches it and preaches it as a religion... There are people that preach it as a fucking religion and you guys protect it. So stop telling me that you want pedophiles to do life in prison. I want them fucking dead. But we can't do any of that until you guys stop fucking protecting them. I don't know who's the bigger piece of shit. The religion that teaches about pedophilia and preaches it and allows it to happen within its society? Or the society... That says, yeah, no, we're good with that. You're more than welcome to come into our country. Okay? You need to know that the Zionist Talmud reading pieces of shit are fucking pedophiles. Okay? And they love their little children. They fucking love them. And guess what? The Muslim nations that surround them, yeah, they're not fucking down with that shit. Don't ask me why there's a war in the fucking Middle East. Don't ask me that question anymore. Because you don't like the answer I'm going to fucking give you. Okay? Look at through all of history how many times the nations have fucking kicked the Israeli Israelites out of their nations. They don't like their child ritualistic sacrifice. They don't like their religion. And you know what? Not a big fan of it myself either. Ritualistic child sacrifices and pedophilia being openly preached as doctrines that are allowed in a civil society today? Don't tell me Israel's fucking civil. Yeah, it's got democracy. It all voted that it's allowed to rape children. That's democracy. And you know what? If there was enough people in that country that said, no, you can't vote, you can't rape children, and then we really saw a democracy enact, war would happen, and those who said you can't rape children would be dead. 
That's why there's no Christians in fucking Israel. You can't go there preaching about Jesus, can you? So why are churches gathering together in a mass totals? Our nations together give them like $6.8 billion annually. Probably a lot of that comes from varying forms of religious donations. But you guys want to protect the nation of Israel. The Israel from the Bible that God's talking about, okay, he establishes that on the earth. No man, woman, or child establishes it on the earth. God, him, or herself does this. If this is true, I have not seen the finger of God roll back the heavens and create Israel yet. Oh, yeah. No, we're, we're climbing this. We're done. We're done. It's not anti-Semitism anymore. I don't give a fuck anymore. If that's what you believe, and you're okay with that shit, yeah, I don't. I don't agree with it, and I'm not okay with that shit. And it really has nothing to do with my religious backgrounds. It has everything to do with, I don't think you should be allowed to do that to fucking children. As I said, I don't care what the religion is, or what you name it. Jesus fucking Christ, give us the strength now because it ain't doing good. We ain't doing good. And now we want to impeach the president. This is why, by the way, we're impeaching the president. If you haven't figured it out yet, critical mass is fucking climbing. People have figured it all out. We've figured it all out. We don't want to fight anymore. And all we have to do is A, stop sending money to one particular country, and B, if we really wanted to set things right, we could destroy that country. And we would have probably made amends with the world. Our bad. We fucked up. We'll go back there. We'll fix it. Garrett fucking to you. Won't take long. I didn't know why our countries didn't allow Jews in during the Second World War. I didn't get it. So I had to fucking research it. Same reason why I didn't get why we weren't letting Muslims in. Just because they were Muslims. I thought we were against extremists. Extremisms. The extremists. Those terrorists. Okay, don't tell me a four-year-old little girl from a war-torn country is a terrorist. It just it doesn't compute. You know what? If she is, I'll take my chances. I really will. Like, I, I just, I can't. I can't fight anymore. We can't fight anymore. We either try to help each other through it to the very best of our own abilities without compromising our own integrities, or we destroy it. It's one or the other. We're not going to be able to have it both ways. And I personally am tired of fucking seeing dead people on the, on the news all over the internet. I'm just tired of it. And it's not about stupid people going out there and doing stupid things on Facebook. No, no, no. Fucking drone strikes hitting fucking civilians. Not a big fan of those kinds of things. You know, schools and hospitals being bombed with my taxpaying dollars. Not a big fucking fan of things like that. You know? Sending money to protect a country whose religious ideological beliefs is far from fucking appropriate. Not just in my eyes, but to anybody who took two minutes to actually research it. And then I'm going to say, oh, well, no, that's just anti-Jewish propaganda. No, it's not. It's your book. There's actually like fucking 36 volumes of it. Okay? That's not Jewish. That's not propaganda. That's a book that you guys keep in your fucking synagogues, in your fucking libraries. Don't tell me it's propaganda used to, pro to propagate hate towards you. No. If you want it to stop, you take all 36 books out and you start a bonfire. Maybe then the world takes you seriously again. Maybe that's half the problem. Maybe the Talmud should return to being the oral Torah alone.
Maybe you guys really never should have written that down. You know, maybe they were right. Maybe there was a reason why that shit was never written down. But now that it has been written down, and that we do know what you like and what you don't like, Welcome to the war. I guess I understand now why Muslims will say foolish things like convert or die. Was, hey man, you guys are lucky, dude. You guys are fighting Muslims over there. Something, tells, uh, something like seven years? You're granted seven years to convert before they choose to actually violently fucking kill you? I'm sorry. But if I'm holding a pedophile at the end of my rope here... Motherfucker don't have seven years to fucking convert. And the truth is, is that even after he converts, he's going to meet his goddamn maker by my hands. So converting does not save your life. It doesn't. Merely gives you a new person to talk to before you go down to the fucking downstairs. Starting to understand that whole reign in hell instead of serving in heaven concept. If people believe that this existence is hell right now on earth, that would mean those in power that are reigning, that are ruling earth, would be of the highest level of satanic worshippers known to man. If you believe that earth was hell. The brain gets to do all kinds of different thinkings if you just allow it to do so. You just got to maintain a fucking rational thought process while you're doing it and realize, okay, like this is the person who I want to be, this is who I am, and uh, this is who I don't want to be, and this is who I don't want to have in my society. It won't be the first time. That's the sad part. It's not the first time that Zionists or whatever the fuck you want to call them from the ages of old it's not the first time that these cocksuckers have been kicked out of countries. Entire countries! Since before Christ. This entire culture has been systematically kicked out of every fucking country. And now I know why. You think if they would have removed that aspect. Don't ask the Muslims to go through a reformation of religion. When you're giving money to Zionist pedophile pigs. No, no, the Muslims can pray to God five times a day towards the sun at any point that they should cho choose. They're not the ones at this day that are preaching straight up pedophilia. They're not the ones that are sucking baby penises for the blood, creating cases of herpes, and two deaths added to this practice. It's not the Muslims that do that, guys. It's not the Muslims that preach that if you penetrate a girl before she's the age of three that her hymen will grow back. That's not a Muslim teaching and y'all need to fucking stop saying that that shit is. You've confused two books. That happens. I understand. They kind of look the same. They're both from the Middle East. But I'm telling you, if you open these books side by side, they're entirely different. And if you do not attribute these books to the right people, you will kill the wrong people. But is that not the point? Is that not how these little evil, twisted little fuckers are surviving to begin with? Because they have us, the most powerful militaries in the Western Hemisphere, the United States, and all of Great Britain, and fucking damn near 90% of the planet attacking the wrong people. I don't know about you, but you know how they say all wars are banker wars? Okay? Or all, okay? No. We, the West, are done digging the Jews out of the mess that they create for themselves. We're done. We got you out when Hitler was going to fucking put you out. We got you out. We did our part. We picked you up. We dropped you in the fucking Middle East because that's where you wanted to go. We were going to give you something else, a little bit more homier, roomier, cozier, something you were closer to what you were used to. But no, you wanted to go the fuck over there. Okay. 
Okay, we stuck you over there, and now look what you're doing. Look at what look at what you're doing. Didn't change your ways, did you? We're not going to change my religion. That's anti-Semitic. You're going to stop diddling little boys or girls, or we're going to nuke your ass. Is what's going to happen. I'm done with you guys, man. I'm done. I'm done protecting Israel. I'm done not talking about Israeli policies. I'm done not talking about Benjamin Netanyahu because we're not allowed to talk about the fucking Jews. We are done. We're done with that bullshit. That's bad fucking juju. Why? Yes, because there is two of them. Fucking sick of this. You can raise an entire culture to be to hate black people no fucking problem there yeah by the way Talmud Talmud's the one that says uh, that uh, God's Cain Mark black people that's where that came from just put it out there for you black people who think that I'm just hating the Jews it's important for you to know that they you know when 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 Cain killed Abel and and God gave the mark on Abel so that all mankind would know who his seed was. The Talmud says that that mark is black people. So don't tell me that I'm being prejudiced when I'm actually being fucking real and speaking out against a religion that is legitimately fucking racist. It believes that you won't go to heaven. It's okay. I'm not going either. Because we're all fucking goy cattle to them. That's what we are. If you're a Gentile, which means you're not of Jewish descent, if you are not of Jewish descent, you are a Gentile, you are a fucking piece of meat to them. You are goy cattle. If you ever travel around Israel and someone calls you a goy, yeah, that's not a good thing. That's a racial slur that's fucking horrible. It's horrible. It's like you calling a black person a fucking nigger. Okay? It is not to be said. Anybody ever calls me a goy, I'm going to fucking murder them. You call me a goy, you're calling me and all my people less than a fucking cow? You're right, I'm going to go to bat with you. You may not remember the conversation when you wake the fuck up. When I'm done with you, you may not remember what you said that made me fucking just reel on you. Calling us all fucking goy and cattle. You ignorant pieces of shit. It's going there. It's getting there. I ain't done with you yet, you Zionist fucks. And don't worry. There's enough Torah-reading Jews all over the world that know exactly what I'm talking about. Exactly what I'm talking about. There will be entire Jewish movements protecting what I'm about to start spewing about your evil bullshit. You're only 200 years old. You're a fucking political movement. My country, this year, my country is 150 years old. Your little Zionist twisted bullshit plot is 50 years older than my country. You're an old fucking man and we're coming to get you now. I'm out.